confusing this as a happy ending. You haven't been paying attention. Welcome back to the Throne of the Dragon podcast, the show that covers each and every episode of HBO's House of the Dragon. I am Josh of House Blackwood, and with me as always is my bitter enemy, Curtis of House Bracken. Curtis, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm good. (laughs) I have no clue what's happening. You're the brackets. I took the black ones for myself. Wow. I'm taking the good ones. Great. I don't want to be yeah. a bracken. Bracken suck. It's about to be real rough for you in episode three. <laughs> oh. Uh, how you doing, man? We are fresh off of episode two, which I failed to look at the episode name after it was over. What was the episode name? Episode two. Oh, they didn't. Re- so. They did not. No. What? So I uh so I've come up with my own name. Oh, okay. Uh, abs- absolution. I absolution. Think is, uh, yes. They did mention that at word at one point, and I thought, yeah, it's that's 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 good. We'll go with that. There's a lot of uh there's a lot of people here trying to clear their names in this episode, so I think we'll okay. go for that. So I think you could also title it um Otto Loses His Freaking Mind. I mean, can you blame him, Josh? Can you blame his him? His head He's done. is He's about done. to explode. Oh, I mean, at least it didn't fall off. But you know, it's you know. Anyway, um, yeah, that's. Uh, I don't blame him. He's sick and tired of these youth. He's 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 on full uh, get off my lawn mode, um, auto. So yeah, I don't I don't blame him, dude. He's he's done. He's he's past the point of no return you know so it's got to be kind of a frustrating position he's in for a lot of reasons but the main one i'm going to point out is because there's been so much turnover like since he's been around just going all all the way back since he's been around there's been a lot of turnover in a lot of these positions we've seen a lot of fathers die and sons take their places And now he's in the grandfather spot to the guys who are ruling the kingdom. Right. So, yeah, I think it's a frustrating place to be in where you've got the knowledge and experience. But, I mean, you could also argue that Otto doesn't have the knowledge and experience to be dealing with stuff of this magnitude well at this point who does you know there's no think about it there's not been i mean we went through all those years during jaharis's reign of just basically peace and prosperity you know nobody that's living still at this point knew of the days of magor of you know anes and even aegon the conqueror so they didn't know that. If anything, we just know now the peace and the, you know, the, the calm waters. Uh, but yeah, the only yeah. people who have kind of a leg up on that is <clears throat> people like Damon and Corliss <clears throat> who were fighting in the Stepstones for years. Um, people like Kristen Cole who were fighting in the Dornish Marches, where there's always right. fighting. Um, but even at that, it's like he he even makes the the point of saying that when Cole gets named Hand of the King, skipping ahead here, but you know he does make point of you know he doesn't know all he knows is uh, what does he say steel and steel and bones, which is, I mean again this is the battlefield. I mean it's all you really know. You don't know you don't know like how to keep a level head and to basically play the game politically instead of, well, if somebody pisses me off, I'm just going to go punch them in the face or kill them, you know, right. Turn their face into hamburger meat, you know? 
but uh, yeah, Otto yeah, which has... was funny too because Ego was like, oh no, or uh, Allison was like, oh no, he's not temperamental. It's like, yeah, right. Yeah, it's like, did, did you forget about that? Did did you forget? Well, I, you know, it's the Wang, bro. <laughs> the Wang makes you forget. Um, yeah, I guess that's what Otto does kind of have on his side is the knowledge of how to kind of keep the peace, you know, mm. and how to rule during those times. Right. But yeah, there's very few people that are equipped for what's coming now. And there's not been, there's like you were saying, there's nobody who's really, really equipped for this right. because there's not been anything of this magnitude in so long that yeah there's no one alive who's seen anything like it yeah and i think probably yeah i mean <clears throat> the end of magor's reign is the last time you see anything of this magnitude right i mean obviously you had little things pop up um with like vulture kings and you know, little arguments here and there during Jaharis's reign, but nothing, yeah, nothing like the Magor days or yeah, even before that. So be uh, you'd be lucky if you uh, if your lifetime was just during Jaharis's reign, basically. You'd be a very lucky person because you wouldn't have to worry about the before or the after. Yeah. You know, so and now we're getting into uncharted waters with <clears throat> Even in Magor's time, it was just, you know, the only dragon against dragon was um, Valerian against, I don't remember what, Aegon, uh, the Uncrowned's dragon's name was. Do you? No, not off the top of my head. I mean, I could probably look it up real quick, but... Yeah, I think that's the only dragon on dragon combat that we've seen in Westeros so far. And that was pretty short work. Well, well, well. I don't know. Who we got? What do you got for me? Nothing? Uh well, I had the wrong I thought I had I had one at one point, a family tree that actually had um uh, all the dragons, dragons too. Yeah, connected to each person. Uh let me see if I can find that. You can go ahead. Just egg on the go uncrowned forth. dragon. Nah, that's too easy though. Uh, yeah, that's trash. What was that. what was your biggest I don't know if I want to say shocking scene of the episode? Like your most shocking scene, but what was the scene that stood out to you the most? I think one of the ones, well, the first one that comes to my mind, we we started kind of talking about before we recorded was, I'm just sitting there when they when they're doing the procession, the funeral procession, and they get to the, well, I mean, first off, the shot of the child. Because, you know, when they first come out of the gates, the casket's closed. Um, I don't, Which was weird, too, because I thought he was laying on top of the casket later on. Yeah, maybe they he just is took, on like, top. the lid off or something. Hmm. Maybe they just took the lid off. Yeah. Um, but anyway, then it's like it just shows you that shot. And it's just like the so lines like, oh, dear God. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> like, I didn't need to see that, man. Uh, but then, yeah, they hit that that pothole and they couldn't get out. I was like, they're not going to do this. They're not going to do this. Please well, tell me they're not going to rock that body off. <laughs> what really made me the worry. The head just keeps rolling. What really made me worry was they're rocking it back and forth. And then they make a point to like show. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, show like, the oh, kid God. again. You know? Yeah. yeah. I was just like, oh no. Please, please no because it's already showing helena kind of freaking out a little bit and yeah i kind of thought when they started showing that i was like oh no i was like they're gonna do that to like push this over the top like now she's really just like totally losing it but yeah i don't know i was a little bit worried about 
this scene. I wasn't really sure how they were going to be greeted with the state of things in King's Landing right now. Um, I kind of thought it might be like a Joffrey situation where they, you know, the people in King's Landing are suffering and they want to take it out on the Highborns and the King. Uh, well, so, I, I mean, unless, unless something's like coming up later on, I remember from the trailer there being like a scene where it was kind of like the the two ladies are in their um funeral outfits and it's like they're kind of running it's almost kind of kind of like a riot going on in the background i was thinking yeah. the same thing but i believe yeah. we are in like i think we're confusing two different scenes that they were well, showing that's why i was trailers. wondering maybe maybe there that's going to be something else later on yeah i think I we're mean, mixing I know up some we're mixing yeah, up ahead. the funeral one with the riot in King's Landing scene where no. they're all running. No, 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 no. There was one in the actual trailer. Go back and watch the trailer. Okay. Yeah. Trust me. It's it's in the trailer. No, that's what I'm saying, though. It's like, I wonder if that's like was some deleted scene that they just ended up not using in the real show or if there's something else coming down the line, you know. I mean, let's let's be honest. This is not the last death. No, and the but... and the and the twins wasn't the last death either. So, <laughs> spoiler alert. I'm trying to think though, and I, I don't know. I just can't think of a place where it would like kind of fit. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, by the way, it because took him in a the while, trailer he... we've already seen we've already seen Allison someplace else. Like outside of King's Landing, like in the trailer for season the two. Overall season? Oh, yeah. 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 So, like, I don't know when there's going to be time for that between where we are now and her not being there. Right. But, um, yeah. Quicksilver was the dragon. It took him a while, but he found That's right. That's right. I don't know why I always confuse Quicksilver and Silverwing. And so I feel like I just merged the two together. Yeah. Quicksilver. Yeah. Quicksilver. So Quicksilver against Balerion. That's probably like a um Arax versus um uh Vagon situation. Pretty small dragon against uh, oh, yeah. a very large one. Yeah. I think he probably would have been. He would have been bigger than Eric, but because he's older than Jace. Or yeah, older than um, Lucerus. But still, well, yeah, that's no competition. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Th that's got to be some. I'm seeing the scene right now and a trailer from a month ago of just like the overall season. And, okay, hold on. I'm trying to get back to the point. Yeah. It's not like, okay. So it's not really so much. They still have the black veils on though, but they're not riding horse. You know, they're, they're walking. It's almost like there's, but there is some type of like, uh, kind of an uprising in the city or whatever going on. I don't know, hmm. man. But anyway, we'll have to see. Yeah. Um, where to go, Josh? Where to go next? Huh? We talked about Otto. Uh, he's no longer the hand. Uh, second time to get fired. Will we see him again? Who knows? Probably not. <laughs> um, yeah, man, what do you think about uh, what do you think about Chris and Cole as the new hand? Is that scary? I mean, you? Does yeah, that it's you terrifying. <laughs> well, the first thing I thought of was he's going to be like Jack Gleason, dude. He's going to have to quit acting when this is over. Oh, God. Um, the first thing I thought of was 
I remember when Jaharis, I don't remember what his name was exactly. And I can't remember if it was after uh, Amon died, but before uh, Balon became Han, or if it was after Balon. Or maybe it was before Amon. But he he made, like, a, I don't know if he was a King's Guard, uh, the hand, but it, it lasted for, like, a very short while because it's like, again, it's the deal of all he knows is steel and bone type situation. He doesn't know how to be a hand. He doesn't know how to be that strong um, person at your side to help you make level-headed decisions. You know, you yeah. remember what I'm talking about? Who, who was the king? It wasn't Jaharis. Yeah, it was Jaharis. It was towards the end of his reign. I think it was after... Um, after Barth? Yeah, after Barth. Ah, no, I don't but I can't. But I can't remember if it was before Eamon was named his hand or after Eamon had died. I, I can't remember. It was after Barth, though. Okay. But it was like it, the guy was around for a very short time and they, they didn't say a whole lot about him, but they they basically make mention. It was like, yeah, that was kind of a bad decision. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, they're they're supposed to be great warriors and super loyal. They're not. But your place is the battlefield. Yeah, I was like, your place is the battlefield, though, man. Yeah. yeah. So you think he's going to have to quit acting after this, huh? <laughs> You don't think his good looks are gonna help him skate by, maybe? Um <laughs> I don't know. That accent. It's especially in this episode too. Last episode he was mainly just like throwing a couple of snide comments in and you know He turned up the heat on this episode, man. Yeah, but he's right back to being super vindictive, Chris and Cole here. Well, it takes one that of those, out on, uh, yeah, er, er, uh, Eric, Eric, Eric with an A. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the bad part. It's like now you're just, and now you're just trying to. You've got guilt, and you know it for you know things that you've done for, um, because I think it all, it all goes back to what you've been doing or who you've been doing, um, and where you should have been the night before when the child was getting decapitated. Right. Um, and so there's some guilt there and I, it's like, you're, you're forcing that on everybody else. I'm going to blame others. And unfortunately, Arik, uh, is, uh, is someone else. Um, he's got those crazy eyes too, man. So, yeah. Cold that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I yeah, know and it's, it's his and it's stupid like, facial expressions, bro, yeah. that drive me crazy. I just <laughs> want to punch him through the screen. It's one of those two where it's like he made the comment about uh, RX um, cloak, mm-hmm. you know, and talking about you know soiling your 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 honor and da 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 da. I, know, I, just, I was waiting for the comeback, you know. I was just waiting for that comeback. I of, was losing really? my mind. I was just like, oh my god, dude, yeah. this guy is just projecting <laughs> everything. That's what I'm saying, man. It's like you're just throwing all your guilt on somebody else, and now you've gotten him killed on a suicide mission, basically. You know? Yeah. And, uh, man, that was rough. That would be my other choice for um, whatever you said. Not really a shocking scene, but just one that like really stood out to me. Just that whole like thought of dang he's really gonna go there and try to do that i mean obviously it's not gonna work out for you but you know it kind of got towards when when he came in the room where they both met each other the twins it was it was one of those i had a thought of dang this would be a great time to like be able to mark one of them real quick so i could tell who's who <laughs> run over um, here real quick right exactly <laughs> let me mark you um but, you know, towards the end there, when it was getting to the point where it's like you knew what was about to happen, one of them was going to die. Just that thought of, and I think it was from the books, of 
Oh yeah, it it was from when uh, um oh crap uh uh um Raj the Dodge Barat oh Raj the Dodge oh Raj the Dodge uh he was gonna go after his brother and he wanted oh, to kill yeah. him but Jaharis said I'm not gonna let you do that because there's nothing worse than a kinslayer. And that popped in my mind. I was like, oh man, it's like even if even if Eric wins, like, dude, you're gonna be known as a kinslayer now, even if it was like protecting the queen. But then even at that, I don't I don't even know if that's fully the reason why he fell on his own sword, you know. It may be more too of just like the emotion of I just killed my brother. That's how I read it like for the purpose of the show. And like right. we said, this is another one of those points where we'll talk about a lot of this difference between fire and blood and um, the first two seasons of the show. And Later, um, yeah. yeah, our episode after the season is over, but for the purpose of the show. Yeah. I really felt like he was just overcome with what he just did. I mean, his yeah. wounds could have been enough to kill him anyway, Ooh. but speaking of wounds, how about that move of sticking your fingers right in that, into that, into his uh, brother's leg in that wound. Yeah. Spot. Oh God. Oof. That made me quiver, man. Do what you gotta. I mean, yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do. I do it to you. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, if yeah, you're like tough, dying, man. right? And that's and now that's the thing about it. Think about we've got three deaths now. We got the death of Luceris. That was more kind of a in in Amon's eyes is like he was just trying to like scare him. He was just trying to mess with them, but he couldn't he couldn't control um, Vagar, and so it got Luceris killed. Uh. The wrong, the wrong kid died, Josh. Oh my god, the wrong kid died. <laughs> um, an innocent child, yes, he was the heir to the Iron Throne, but one who wasn't supposed to be killed got killed, got his head chopped off. Uh, and then now you've got brother killing brother. I mean, that's three like insane deaths that now after two episodes we're having to like look at those three deaths and just like great is this really the road that we're going down <laughs> you well know? which is right. true i mean it is that's what it is i mean it's inevitable in yeah. a civil war you know inner family conflict like this that's the only people who they can kill, you know, is each other. But yeah, I feel well, like that and the rat catchers, but you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, that was pretty rough. Yeah. At first, I wasn't sure. I keep waiting for them to uh, execute a bunch of these people that they have down in the black cells. Well, that's um, see, that's all of what Rhaenyra's I thought. Supporters who they yeah. rounded up before. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, they rounded up servants and such. Well, and, at, the, at beginning the beginning of this episode, episode. that's but what I thought what was going to happen. I was talking about last season. No, I, I yeah, I got, I know what you're talking about, um, but it made me think of that too. But well, yeah, that yeah. that was my first like false flag oh, crap. In this Here episode. <laughs> I was like, oh no. I was like, they're starting with that. They're just gonna like start executing all those people. <laughs> oh great, man. <laughs> um and then the second one, yeah, when I started seeing all the people hanging, I was like, oh man, did they? Uh, uh, oh no, no, it's just the rat catchers. No, it's just the rat catchers. Uh, it's, it's okay, everybody. It's just the rat catchers. <laughs> Who's gonna catch the rats now, bro? The cats. I guess so. Everybody's gonna have a cat. Or two, yeah, Otto brings three. in like a hundred cats or something <laughs> like that. Army of the cats. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just gets to be one of those things, dude, where it just, it lasts all the way up through like current story time in A Song of Ice and Fire because they just like live there and breed and 
generations of cats are just like gone through this place. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man. Yeah, that was um you talk you talk about chess moves in this episode. They use Jaharis Jaharis's death and his funeral as a way to motivate the the small folk to their side. And then not even the small folk, but you know, word gets out by ravens and such to, you know, all the houses across the land, um, to motive using that to motivate to bring to your side. But then you basically counteract that now, at least in the city, with Aegon doing the uh the bad chess move of just, you know what, just hang all the rat catchers. I we don't know which one it was. Let's just get them all and just hang just them all. Kill them bro. all. Let's just kill them all. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good, man. Not good. But. I was I've never really been on Otto's side ever, I feel like. <laughs> Did you feel like you're on auto this side? episode? Yes, I was, I was just, just like, say, man. oh my god! I was like, and everything he's saying is so <laughs> valid here, and then yeah. how he just never backed down. It was a very Tywin and Joffrey situation. Yes, where it's yeah. like, dude, I've been around. I know how this is done, and you can't come in here and just pretend and play the part. Um, exactly yep so yeah i definitely picked up some some taiwan and joffrey vibes there funny so in the first episode you felt uh agon kind of had some similarities to um oh what's daenerys's brother's name viserys viserys yeah uh now in this episode you are feeling like he is portraying. Um... Oh my gosh, what's the name? You just said it, Joffrey. Joffrey, geez, Louise, yes, yeah. Um, He's eh, got that murderous rage. He wants yeah, revenge. I don't really you know? know if he's like, because Joffrey is really more like vindictive and just wants to see people suffer rather than right. like it's serving any kind of point. Just kill them all yeah but it's it was really just the dynamic of the two of them in that room like that conversation yeah. gotcha um but i do feel like he's playing to viserys a little bit when he's playing to his crazier side a little bit like i see more viserys like i feel like that's kind of what he was going for right um and um with auto two makes mention later on when he's talking to um Allison and I think this will I don't know if it'll come up in the next episode or at least we need to kind of keep it in the back of our minds about him going back to old town um Darren is there they did make mention of Darren Right, yeah, we finally get our first so mention we, of we finally get our Yep, so we, we, we can look forward to that. Yep. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what his um, his new project of uh, dealing with the Martells here in the near future uh, will be like. You remember that part? They said that at the very end. She said something about, <clears throat> when he said something about, um, he said Dar- uh, Darren's back there. He, well, you know, we're probably going to need him. Um, and he'll actually listen to instruction. And uh, she said to him that the Martells are kind of wavering and you'll need to kind of work on them, right? Uh, Tyrells. Tyrells, sorry. My yeah, bad. Martells Dorn. My bad. Yeah, yeah. And the Dornish have said, we don't want no part of this. We, oh, we come on. We don't want any of that heat. Please. Uh, yeah, my yeah. Bad. and uh, <laughs> it's... I. I feel like they're not even going to really do anything because it's like, it's not even like really a spoiler because it's like one sentence in the book. But uh, the Tyrells bow out. They're like, we're not going to do either side here. We're... Hey, spoiler because alert. <laughs> it's like she was saying um, their bannermen are not having it. 
Yeah. So they're just going to be like, you know, we're sitting this one out. We're good. We're good. But yeah, the Greens have so much ground force on their side at this point. Um, you know, Tylen Lannister was talking about how they have all of the West, like massing at the Golden Tooth. Classic, classic Western tactics. Classic. You, know? you classic. see it again and again. <laughs> Um, yeah, because that's what happens in A Song of Ice and Fire when the West starts rallying. That's that's their rally point, the Golden Tooth. So, um, yeah, they've got, uh, you know, Storm's End. They've got the Westerlands. And they've got the Crownlands. They're about to start whipping the rest of the ones nearby there into shape because i mean you you gotta have your surrounding area right. covered i right. mean it's already pretty clear that the north and the veil are against you here you know with drift mark and some of the other coastal houses there Celtigar. right um so gotta lean uh, into what you got now man right right yeah uh there was a lot of good music in Game of Thrones as a whole. Um all eight seasons. I could point out in every season some amazing you know score that they had or a song they decided to do like uh Jenny's song or the music behind uh The Long Night uh, there's there's some good ones, but season one and the first two episodes of season two of House of the Dragon have already blown the music for Game of Thrones out of the water. Okay. Um, I pointed that out a lot last season. Uh, I feel like there are multiple episodes I was talking about how just great the music was. And this episode, we were right back to it. Um, what they were using behind the opening scene where they're showing the fallout of um, Prince Jaehaerys' death. Um, when they're showing Aemond going through uh, the room where he and Kristen Cole were and seeing uh, the hidden passageway there. Uh, when he realizes the coins aren't on the table anymore, and he kind of puts together that they were there looking for him. So, uh, while we're talking about Eamon, I would never, ever, ever, ever want to body shame anyone. But was oh, he God. doing... Was he? I wondered, kind of, if he had tried to slim down for playing younger you know and i don't i don't know i was just like really surprised at how skinny he was when we saw him in the brothel there yeah it shocked me i was like wait is that aiming who the heck man <laughs> yeah i didn't get that that was kind of i don't know if i <laughs> would be as worried about facing him in a sword fight now yeah, not so much. The clothing it kind of looks really, like you uh, could like, hides... blow him over. <laughs> he looks sick. Like something wrong with him, or what? It just kind of made me think yeah. of um, Christian Bale and a couple of the movies oh. he's been in. The Machinist. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, oof, that's rough. Tough to see. Ugh. But then you see him as like, oh, who was he? Was he supposed to be supposed to be Dick Cheney in a movie not so long ago or something? He was somebody that was like really fat. Uh, <laughs> it's like, what the heck? Uh, was it Harry Truman? No, no. I remember what movie it was. Huh. <laughs> it's so many tabs open now. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> Forget his name already. Christian Bale. There's too. I've got too much stuff in my brain. 
I am excited that we're going to get to um, hopefully see Moon Dancer next episode. That's one of the dragons we haven't got to see yet, except for in the trailers. But, you know, the trailers, they always give you just like a quick little shot so that you can't hardly tell what's going on. Every dragon just has very interesting, unique characteristics. So, okay, so he played, yeah, he played in Vice, uh, Dick Cheney, um, gained 40 pounds for that. And then the other one, too, he was, um, he was fat on where'd they go? American Hustle, gained 40 pounds, also. Nice, a lot of cheeseburgers, anyway. What? What were you saying? <laughs> yeah? yeah? I think you're on mute. <laughs> moon dancer. I'm like moon yelling moon dancer, dancer over here. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh yes, what? Okay. So that okay, that was the dragon that was shown at that one point, right? On the beaches. No? What? On the beaches. <laughs> Uh, Adam is picking something out of the sand. Not is that sure Adam why. or Alan? That was Adam, isn't Alan? Okay. Uh, Alan's the bald one. Okay, I think. Yeah, Adam, I know. Adam, I... Yeah, 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 yeah. Because isn't okay? Because isn't the deal is correct me if I'm wrong, but spoiler alert, possibly isn't Adam. The non bald one, uh, supposedly thought to be Carlos Bellarian's bastard. I think they both are. Oh, you think they both are? Okay. I don't remember a hundred percent, but if I, I had was gonna... to guess right now, just based on what I'm seeing, I think they both are. Okay, I was going to ask you about about them, kind of. Not too much story, but just kind of like overall, like what's their, what's their deal? Because I remember they did say brother to each other, so like they were actual brothers. But yeah, that's their deal. Without going too crazy here, yeah, I mean, that's fine. Wanna, I, yeah. I didn't, yeah, I didn't want you to. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're Josh, not going to talk buddy. about who's who's <laughs> lying who. Okay, but, you know, I mean, there were. A couple little things in this episode that gave you a hint as to where we're going. You know, right. um, we see Hugh Hammer and his wife. They're struggling. Um, does anything stick out to you about old Hugh Hammer? Yeah, I uh, kind of wondered about that hair color there, buddy. Yeah, kind of, kind of wonder what was uh, might have been happening. Uh, maybe what his uh, his parentage is, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, heritage, maybe, huh? Yeah. I don't know. I guess we might find out. Yeah, that yeah. did stick out to me. No or uh, at uh, Hugh stuck and out then like a sore thumb. I believe the guy who walked up and <clears throat> asked what um about the rat catchers. Yeah, I believe that on. guy is uh named Ulf. Okay. And I think he's another one of these guys that we're going to see later on. I think that was him. I didn't check the subtitles to see if it said his name. Now, do they play a very integral part in this? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Hugh and Ulf both will. Okay. Okay. You know, bookmark those names, people. Yep. Um, uh, I don't think we're going to see that probably for a couple episodes, if I had to guess. But because okay. hopefully this next episode with what we saw from the trailer should be. I mean, I'm hoping I hope they're not teasing us again because they showed us some of those same uh, scenes <laughs> last <laughs> week <laughs> saying next week on and. We didn't get those seeds. They showed some of the other <laughs> seeds again. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll get some of that uh, Rack and Blackwood conflict going on there. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, you know who I feel bad for in this episode, Josh? Who? Helena? Helena. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Feel bad for her, man. Because, I mean, if you really think about it, out of everybody, she is probably the most innocent. Like, she, well, like what has she done wrong? You know? Nothing. You know, and now she has to, she's basically isolated. She's lost a child. Yeah, I don't, it's, yeah. See, I, and I read it differently than they apparently meant for it to be in the show. But when they have that moment where um, Aegon and Helena pass each other on the stairs, Mm -hmm. I read it as like he can't even talk to her, you know, that like he and I just doesn't that, want anything yeah. to do with her or whatever. But the when they were talking about it after the episode, they said that it was supposed to be like they're almost more connected now because of this. Mm -hmm. And there's supposed to be just kind of like that look between them is just like them acknowledging each other as like, you know, just hmm. acknowledging like the pain that they're both feeling. That's what they okay. said. I didn't really read it that way. Yeah, I didn't. I don't but, read it that way either. Uh, but I'm with I guess you. That's I feel how it's they like almost kind, kind of, of like intended. More well, but but I don't know, because I mean, I, I guess I could see that. But in the same way, it's like. He was already kind of like distant from her anyway. I mean, you go back to like the last season when when they were younger and you know, they talked bad about their sister. They didn't like her because she was different. She liked to play with bugs, you know. She she was just weird, you know. She speaks in riddles. Nobody likes that. Nobody like, I want you to speak to me in plain English, you know. Um so I think I don't know, I was just kind of felt like not that he didn't want anything to do with her, but it's just like, you're already kind of strange to me. You're already kind of estranged. And it's like, I feel like you're just kind of like even further, just like, what do I even say to you now? You know? Right. If I didn't even really know what to say back then, now what do I say? But yeah, I don't, I don't we know. We can that. say this. I think there's one of two options. It either pushes you further apart from each other or it brings you closer together. True. True. Uh, Josh, is it? Oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. No, ahead. no, go ahead. No, I was Mine... moving on to something else. No, that's fine. I'm. I was just. I just had a little quip about something. But what were we gonna yeah, say? Yeah, go for it. No, go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say. Uh, I love. All right. So here's my point. In <laughs> uh, I love uh, Jasper Wilde's um, just sass through most <laughs> of this episode. <laughs> and I, I don't know why nobody like really calls him out on it ever. Right. Because it seems like he's not a fan of what's going on here. And there's times it feels like he's saying like, oh, I mean, you guys did kill her son. That he's just, you know, he's like, oh, yeah, I mean, he took her throne, though. I don't know. She's yeah, pissed, I guess. Always, uh, yeah, but he always kind of came off as a dick, you know. Yeah. I always felt like that, you know. But yeah, <laughs> I've just like been catching it a lot. Like, <laughs> oh my god, no, nobody gonna say anything about this. Nobody gonna hold him accountable. Yeah. Uh, That's it's like, oh my god, he's dead. He's like, I, yeah, but I mean, I mean you guys duh. killed her kids, so. <laughs> What are you going to do? Expect? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh uh, man. Yeah, it's it's uh safe to say we all know where Damon's going. He's he's all. done waiting. He's done waiting, Josh. He's done. Yeah. I'm just going to go do my own thing now. I was interested like as to what he was doing creeping around and I know he's apparently going through like some kind of weird basement cellar type situation. I don't, I don't know what was going on there. It looked like he was like underground or something. When? Uh, on a scene for a next episode or? Yeah. Oh, okay. 
I don't know. It looks I mean, like part you just of kind it, of like sneaking around at times in Heron Hall. It seems like just kind of killing people, picking people off here and there. I mean, you're yeah, you're one person. What do you what are you supposed to do? You know, well, I mean, Unless that's you just want to set the whole place though. on fire. I don't know. Just it seems odd. I feel like he would just roll in, and I mean, they have. I don't think they've declared Lord Tully at this time. Like wants to declare for Aegon. Right. But he's super old and dying. And so his grandson is just like, I'm I'm not gonna let this old dying guy like take us over to the side who's usurping the throne. Right. Um, so he <laughs> wants to yeah, pledge for Rhaenyra. Um so I don't think that Heron Hall is like, oh no, okay, yeah, oh okay, I am so dumb, I totally forgot that. And it's uh, on recording. <laughs> Heron Hall is controlled by the Strongs at this time, mm -hmm. and so that's mm -hmm. Laris Strong on the greens. Boom, we got there. Unless somehow it is changed. Oh no, never. Mind. Okay, no, never mind. No. Now I'm dumb. <laughs> now I'm dumb. Welcome to the Dumb and Dumber Show. <laughs> Would you like to hear the most annoying sound in the world, Josh? <laughs> uh, absolutely not. <laughs> well, uh, do you got anything else, Josh? I've got one more thing. Yeah, it's just really short, but I didn't know uh, if you got anything else. I've got a few things. Yeah, go for it. Let's go ahead and go with you, and then I'll, I'll finish this off. Um, just the general sad vibes in the castle throughout this whole episode. Well, yeah. What do you want? <laughs> Man, they're packing up the the kids' room. Oh. Man, that's tough. Uh, yeah. You just... know, you know, it's always been a strange phrase to me. What? And so Chris and Cole standing there as they're breaking down the bed, and the guy comes up to to walk through the door, and he's standing in the doorway, and he says. What did he say? If it pleases me, Lord. If it pleases me, Lord. Strange. I mean, I know basically that's just saying, pardon me, can I get through, basically. It's just kind of a weird way to say it to me. <laughs> if it pleases my Lord, get the hell out of my way. Yeah, but I mean, those are, uh, those are the formalities I know, they gotta just, go through. I know. It was just kind of funny, just the way that that if phrase If it pleases is. you, would you step if aside? If it pleases you, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like, pardon me. I beg for um, forgiveness that I'm about to say something to you. Just want to reiterate again how much I wanted to slap <laughs> Kristen Cole during that scene with... Uh, you, bro. All you right. know it's only gonna get and worse. The cloak. Oh my god. I know, but dude, like I don't feel as bad because for I don't know. I don't hate him. Like, I don't have this overwhelming hate for him that I feel like might not be satisfied in the end, you know. Right. Because I, I think we've talked about just in the past referring to the dance that like this doesn't work out good for anyone. Nobody wins. Nobody like, wins. <laughs> and I would most people die. Most. <laughs> Not just like some like in Game right. of Thrones. Most. It's, you know, when we when we all thought in season eight that they were going to kill off pretty much everybody like that's what this show is. That's what House of the Dragon is. So it's our reality now, yes. I know that eventually he's going to get his comeuppance. So <laughs> I don't feel as bad about it. Oh, I mean, man. it's it's annoying as hell because his yeah. smugness and the fact that like he and Aegon think they just have this on lock, you know? Like, how, how could they ever stand against us? We have Vagar. Yeah, we have Vagar, man. It is one dragon. You know, the Dornish took down a dragon of that size with no dragons. Right, exactly. So yep. 
Ah, but they didn't live to tell the tale. They weren't there, Josh. They don't know. Yeah, that's true. Somebody needs to be reading like Damon. Yes, yes. Somebody needs to spend a few years in Pentos just reading. May I May I give you some advice, Josh? Okay. Uh, I, if I were you, I would withhold my um, want to punch Kristen Cole in the face because... If you're not careful, he may end up pushing you up against the wall and making out with you. So be careful, okay? Because it seems like he likes that type of stuff. And I don't so. want that. I don't want that for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that for you either, buddy. So just be careful. I'm with you. I'm with you on that, but just be careful. He looks like he's into some weird stuff. Yeah. Um. <laughs> what did you have? Oh, well, my final thing is it's just one little phrase, Josh. And I think we can both agree is no further mistakes from here on out. Everything has to be with intention and and discreet and to the point. No, uh, you can kill this guy. If you can't find him, you might kill somebody else. Maybe. Sure. I don't know if somebody happens to cross your path. Make no more mistakes, Josh. No more mistakes. No more mistakes. That's all right. There's going to be more mistakes. But that's foolish, Josh. We all know there's going to be more mistakes. Come on now. Come on. Yeah, there's going to be there's going to be more. Um, But we're here for it. (laughs) I am over all this Kristen Cole and Allison shit. They are laying it on so heavy through both of these episodes, and I can't figure out why. Because, I'll tell you why. Because they're HBO, and they can. I just can't figure out what purpose it serves, really, for either of their characters. I don't know, man. I really don't know either, man. I just think they're basically contractually obligated to show a sex scene every episode. A very uncomfortable sex scene. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> no. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, because the whole thing in the book, remember, is that Kristen Cole has this disdain for Rhaenyra because she wanted wanted him to break his vows and i won't do such a thing never yeah so i don't know this is i feel like you know what josh now now he's preaching to to his brothers about soiling themselves oh my god yeah just projecting everything (laughs) shame shame he's he's in too deep josh um the uh I'm good. okay you were talking about um the scene with Allison Otto where they mentioned Daron for the first time yeah um at the end of that scene where Allison's like I have to confess to you like I've sinned she's about to tell him about Kristen Cole everything that's going on and Otto just goes I don't want to hear it he's just like <laughs> Nah. No. <laughs> I'm good. Eh, what does it matter? She went back to her room and committed his more sins. So but she's like, oh my Aggressively. God. Aggressively. <laughs> he's like, uh, ah, man. yeah. We're we're having a good moment here. And he's like, nah. I nah. Wanna, I don't want to help you out. I don't want to know. <laughs> oh no, I'm done talking, so I'm gonna move on now. Um, I yeah. think you got early on in the episode, it was a little confusing what Aegon was really feeling the most from this. When you first see him um, in the aftermath, he's destroying Viserys's model and which that that broke my heart. I love that model. I love yeah, that model. man. 
That hurt me too, bro. Yeah, that was like a lifetime Man. of work. Oh, destroyed in a few seconds. Yeah. And then later on, you see him carrying it out in the wheelbarrow. Oh, God. Just right in the garbage. No. No. Um, but in that moment, you know, he's just so bent on revenge. He's angry. He's yelling, how dare they make a move against me like that? But by the end of the episode, you know, Allison comes in and he's just in his room crying. Yeah. Uh, a lot of emotions. A lot of yeah. things happening up in that brain, Josh. I think that we forget a lot how this all goes with Aegon, you know? Um, he's not raised to be the king. He doesn't want to be the king. Well, he by, told. by the time he's <laughs> older, yeah, he has, like, no want to be the king. Right. Um, and, you know, the kind of... He's already kind of a wreck, you know? He's already kind of an emotional wreck. And then he's put in this position. He's led to believe that... Viserys wanted him to be king. It was just kind of a deathbed wish. And yep. now he's in a position where he has no idea what he's doing. Um, he just dropped Otto. And um, his son is dead. Right. So this is all getting, I think, a little too real for Aegon. I think it's easy to look at it and be like, oh, yeah, Aegon's the usurper. Like he took Rhaenyra's throne, you know, but it doesn't get to that vindictive, you know, point where we should hate him as like the usurper until kind of coming up but he's he's still in that human stage of just like stress you know we've all had bad days right we all had stuff just piling on top of us you know i just kind of feel like it's kind of a human thing where it's like you look like you're okay and then it's like next thing you know it's like oh dude this dude is not okay <laughs> yeah you know so yeah the human element. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see his development throughout the uh, season. Or the rest of the dance. However long it might be. Ugh, I won't want to look at him later. Yeah. <laughs> Bro. Uh... Do you, uh, do you have anything else? That was it, man. I'm uh, looking forward to the next episode. We're getting into that rhythm, man. We're already, I mean, think about it. We only have six more episodes left to go, Josh, in this season. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe it? Man. Yeah, because we have, it was well, seven weeks, but we have like, um, there's a break week. Oh, what? Yeah, July 7th, I want to say. Mm, no. <laughs> no, there's no break. Are you sure? Yeah, this the deal that I'm looking at here goes June 30th, and then episode, that's episode three. And then episode four is July 7th. And then 14th, 21st, 28th, 4th. Ain't no break, bro. You don't get no breaks in the dance. Come on, bro. You think they're getting a break? You think, oh, hey, hey, hey Renier over there, time out for Mid -season a second. Okay, break. I need a break for a week, okay? All right, I'll see you in about a week. Yeah, there's no breaks, bro. What's a there's week, no Curtis? We're skipping years. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, there's, there's no, there's no break, bro. There's no rest. No rest for the wicked. We're doing this thing. We're, we're going all out, buddy. I don't know where the heck you saw that. By the way, I'm now seeing 
I've got two sites that have confirmed. Well, they're showing me the same episode title name, Rhaenyra the Cruel. Okay. But it's interesting though, because I'm if I stay on HBO though, they still have it listed as episode two. Yeah. But the Wikipedia page and then the Wiki of Westeros both have it as Rhaenyra the Cruel. Okay. So I think we'll probably go with that unless you I like it with absolution. A son for a son and Rhaenyra the Cruel. Rhaenyra the Cruel. Okay, we'll go with that then. All right. Well, let's get out of here, Curtis. Make sure you guys rewatch. <clears throat> oh, my God. Episodes <laughs> one and two of season two of House of the Dragon. Um, you know, be looking for those little things you might have missed that could give you some clues to what's coming next. I what caught a couple names? moments where uh, it seems like Helena is maybe seeing some things that are about to happen. So definitely be on the lookout for that. <laughs> she's she's seeing the, the driving crooner. <laughs> oh, he's trying to speed up. He's trying to get ahead of me. <laughs> he's trying to make it look fake. <laughs> Classic. All right. Uh, make sure to follow us on YouTube at Is Survived by Productions. That's where you can find all the episodes from all of our shows, not just this show, but our other shows as well. We also have the History of the Cores podcast and the History of the Cores After Hours podcast, where we cover bands from different core genres. Uh, we also have the Red Right Hand podcast, which we cover all uh, six. There were six, I six. think. <laughs> All six seasons of six. the Peaky Blinders. A <laughs> very, six. <laughs> very thorough and in-depth look at the Peaky Blinders there. All right. In this so. next scene, Tommy walks in the room. Now, his he's suit is very blue. Mad. His, his suit, suit is blue. blue. Shoes he's, are brown. He's starting to light up. He hadn't lit it up yet. He's starting to light that cigarette up. <laughs> very thorough each it's episode is thorough. like six hours long <laughs> yeah it's insane it was ridiculous what were we doing the next time we do it we're actually going to do like a table read between the two of us we're each going to take up uh, a bunch of characters and we're just going to go through the series uh doing a table read on each episode so you know come back for that that might be fun for like one episode <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that I think that would be kind of fun. Not six seasons, but that'd be pretty fun. <laughs> um, you can also follow us on Twitter at Is Survived by Productions or on my personal at Joshua Lynn Gary. They're both at the bottom here. Uh, make sure when you guys are over there on YouTube and Twitter, you like our posts and subscribe. I think that's it. See you guys next week for episode three. And uh, yeah, if you think this has a happy ending, you haven't been paying attention. <laughs>